All right, Brianne, we are so excited to have you on today and all of the cool things that you're going to share with us and all the teachers out there. I know that they're going to be really excited about this episode. So of course, we like to ask our guests, just tell us more about yourself, your teaching experience, and then how that led into your journey of your business. Absolutely. Thank you both so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so I'm Brian Leeming. I'm the founder and CEO of Unruly Studios, and we create the Unruly Splats membership program that we work with schools on. But my, um, I'm so sorry. Can I start over? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can, we can cut it. That's no, it's yeah. Okay. All right, Brianne, we are so excited to have you on today. And I know that you have so much to share that we're really curious about. And I know that our listeners are also going to love too. So we like to start out just getting to know you a bit better. So just tell us about yourself, your teaching experience, and then how that all connected together into your business. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Excited to be here. I am Brianne Leaving, the founder and CEO of Unreleased Studios. And really where it all started for me was back in my own third grade classroom. I was super lucky that I was exposed to coding in third grade in the 90s, which was not very common at that time. Uh, yeah, and I feel super lucky. I was exposed in a way that I was engaged in it through an art program, but we were drawing and, and making art through code, which I, I was really into art. So it got me really interested. And then 10 years later in college, I studied cognitive science and took some computer science for that as well. And it kind of came full circle for me there. I was also a college athlete, which relates to our product a lot because it really brought in uh, kind of that play element and the competitive and sort of collaborative team building element of what we do at Unreleased Studios. So just a quick recap on what Unreleased Studios is, we are, are creating this um, experience called Unruly Splats, which it combines STEM learning with active play for students in elementary and middle school. And the splats work, they are really these durable blue buttons on the ground that kids can run around and jump on to play active games. They play things, anything from relay races to whack-a-mole to obstacle courses, and then they can code the app, you know, they light up, they make sounds, they sense when they're stomped on, but they can code it through a kid-friendly language based on block coding and create their own rules. And that's really the important part. They're creating their own rules for active games. And we partner directly with schools um, through these memberships where we not only bring in the tool, but for us, it's just super important that we bring in ongoing training and support. So my husband is a career educator. He's been in education for 12 years. So when I was in business school and had the idea for this product, it was sort of through his eyes as an educator and how technology was sort of being brought to him at the school he was at in New York City Public Schools. And, um, and I was seeing how kind of a lot of education technology sort of almost tried to replace the teacher, whereas the really good ones actually empowered the teacher and like put the teacher in the driver's seat and made their life easier made it easier to bring in engaging concepts and like engagement in general. So it was sort of somewhat inspired by that. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, flash to today, we're in hundreds of schools around the US and Canada, and we've had over a million stomps on the Unruly Splats product. And oh, wow. yeah, it's, it's been a really, really exciting awesome. time for us. I, I, so you guys can keep track of how many stomps there are like that? <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the things we do with our schools. So for instance, we have, upcoming in March, a stomp madness competition. So through the different I, schools, they get to stomp for charity and like we're donating a penny per stomp to the Kaboom uh, building playgrounds in underserved communities based on that. Yeah, so we can track the stomps just at the school level and, and tell, we can also track kind of the types of blocks of code they're using. And it helps us get the engagement that we're looking for when we're partnering with schools because we really see computer science as something that should happen throughout the year and kind of through different subjects cross-curricular and that usage data helps us really work with schools on, on making that happen and it's, it's super rare in this industry but we want to make sure like we're building momentum with, with the STEM program and that it's sort of like this groundswell. I, I wrote down so many great things and <laughs> there's so many awesome things you said and like if you're watching the video or you're listening just the excitement in your voice I think as an educator gets me excited because that's 
what it's about. I mean, when it comes to the end of the day, like when I hear the word, when you said like a million stops, I felt like you were just so pumped about it. So I love that. And I appreciate that first off. And uh, thank you for, you know, all that. That was awesome. But one thing I kind of wanted you just to touch on, because I mean, it's on, you kind of talked about it, but it's something that I always ask because I think it's important education as like when I was a student and a teacher, you know, what are some examples or maybe benefits of that coding integration? Like you were talking about, I know you talked about it a little bit, but like if we could get some like really cool, like stories maybe, or just different feelings you have about that. Absolutely. So it's really part of our philosophy at Unruly that we believe that coding and STEM should happen throughout the day and in different subjects because it really brings it home for students. It lets them connect in a really relevant way to things they're interested in and bring technology into that. So um, some examples are like we work in all different fields. So instead of always, you know, a lot of times we partner with these amazing STEM teachers like yourselves, and that is our, our favorite, you know, one of our favorite ways mm -hmm. to work with schools. But a lot of times it's like we go beyond that. And we also go, we're working with the STEM teacher coding games, but then we bring it into PE. And so um, an example of that is we have this incredible PE teacher, Coach G in the Bronx at one of our public schools there. Uh, in New York City public schools and he brought in splats in his PE class. He was had never coded before, but was able to, they kind of have initiatives at their school to bring technology into the different subjects. And he was able to sort of check that box for his administration, but also like bring it in a, such an engaging way. So they, what he actually did is he had, we had a splats relay race game already pre-programmed that he was able to work on with the kids but also incorporate it into a football unit that they were already doing. So we had to be teaching the student, right. So like for the yeah. first time, and that's kind of the cool thing is you get to see the product and, and see where it goes, how other mm -hmm. teachers use it. Um, we also go into a lot of libraries where sometimes the technology is happening. So we've had librarians like Deb Dixon is one of our amazing librarians in Somerville Public Schools outside of Boston. She brought in uh, Splats as an interactive storytelling storybook kind of way. And so was able to use the Splats to like kind of work with a class around telling this storybook, but having them choose, you know, the direction they wanted the character to go in or to answer questions or to add these like awesome sound effects to the story and all of that using code. And so it allows for kids, I think the cross-curricular nature, it just allows for the students to really connect what they're doing to how coding can be a tool in what they're doing in their everyday lives. So that's really what it is for mm -hmm. us, right? Coding and technology in general is a tool. It can help students create, be creative. Um, it can help them solve problems and it doesn't have to be limited to one time of the day or to like, you know, we're doing coding right now. So you're only coding, but it's more like apply it to everyday problems, like apply it to a relay race or PE. I love, and I love that, like that you said this, cause we even talked about this kind of yesterday yeah. in our PD with some of those <laughs> teachers was like, when you're using cross-curricular, I feel like it works when you put a little bit of your personality behind it is the way I work. And that was exactly what I heard with like, the librarian example, like the PE yeah. example, they're, they're passionate about it because it's something they love to do. And that has to feel so good when you see that, because I know when I get to do that in my room and I'm like, you know, I love sports. So when I get to integrate, like in March, I try to do like basketball activities with March madness and STEM. So I get really excited about it. So I feel like that is so cool that they're able to put their personality behind it. And I feel like that makes them excited to, you know, use it and be part of that and like you said it almost like it makes it like so real to them and the kids I that is so cool to me and like the two different examples you gave were great because you I feel like they're two different people like you got a, T, a, T, a PE teacher who's all about you know competition running those relays and then you got a librarian that's all about like the story structures that to me was just so cool those stories so I love those ideas that was awesome you have anything to add for that Naomi no, I think it's like super great. Cause like we have all sorts of teachers who listen to, to this podcast. Like they're not just all STEM mm -hmm. teachers. And so like you said, like the PE teacher could check off boxes, but it was something meaningful for his kids. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it might be hard for a lot of teachers to get started, how to implement technology in a meaningful way, make it an integrated experience. So you're really with this tool, really bringing that to life and making it engaging in a different way, like not how traditional coding might be taught in classrooms, which is totally fine, but it's nice to have 
different mediums to try it out. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think even like the best rollouts, the best way that it works is when it is a group of teachers, mm-hmm. because then you just get it. It's, you know, you get to kind of spark that throughout the day, throughout the year, and it becomes this like movement and, and then kids want to do it all the time, but they also can think of all these other ways to apply it to, to other subjects. We even have like this really fun, like voting machine that we make on Splats where they can count the votes on different things. And we've had, so kids can invent their own, for instance. So they've done things like vote, what do you like better, Nike or Adidas or, you know, the beach or the pool and things like that. But actually the, the best is when you can even bring a game like that into a subject, maybe history or something that you're already studying and have students vote on like different kind of pros and cons of things or, or um, multiple choice questions, things like that. So you can kind of just bring movement and just a, yeah. a new angle and like to even any subject like when we chat I mean we me and you have chatted before this even and stuff I just think it's so cool to hear like all the different possibilities of it because you know when I was kind of you know talking to you and doing the re- and the research and the past talks we've had I was like you know it's a lot of movement and coding but not only is it that but like you said you can integrate all kinds of different subjects and I think that's so cool for teachers because you know every teacher has their passion there's a teacher that's really passionate about you know writing they're passionate about science maybe or P or math or whatever it might be and they're easily able to take something like this and not know much about it because that's like the biggest complaint in my school is like well I can't use coding because I don't know how to code like you know how to code so that's why you should teach it and I'm like no like you could you could definitely learn like there's tools out there like this that are perfect for you you know what I mean so like I feel like this is right up like that teaching alley of making it super easy and personal and just that like that whole thing, like you said, of all that different stuff makes you really want to use it and be part of like that spark. So I love that part of it. I think that's so cool. I love that. Yeah. Our PE teachers on the, because, you know, sometimes they, they, you know, their day to day, they're so good at creating rules Mm -hmm. for games and they're constantly kind of putting kids into these situations where they are learning all these social emotional learning skills and just like building teams and competition or collaboration, everything. But as soon as you give them that tool of being able to code and use this tool, it just goes, you know, and then they collaborate with the tech and the STEM teacher and it becomes this like huge project that kids remember forever. And that's, I think what this all came from Mm -hmm. really is that I studied cognitive science. And a lot of that was around kids learn really well when they're forming memories. And so how can we make this kind of larger than life? Like how can we make this something where they're going to remember it forever because they had spent the whole month of March stomp madness, you know, coding and stomping and, and, uh, and then in the end, they were really learning a lot. Awesome. So with this, so this, I mean, obviously we record the video of this, but most people listen to the audio. So how, like, if I wanted to get started with my room, what is the setup? Like, what are the tools look like? Like if you could describe the best you can, because the, the, your website's amazing. Like if people need to check that out and look at the videos and how interactive even just your website is. Um, but how would you describe it? Like what devices do you need? What do the pieces look like? What's a typical like kit or we might have another name for it look like yeah yeah so we we really partner with schools on a full rollout plan so it really starts with training honestly um we train any teachers at the school that want to be part of this sort of groundswell rollout and so that's why i mentioned like all those different teachers um, we send the right around the splats for however many teachers you have involved and many classes might be going on at the same time um, so typically that's between, you know, 24 and 60 splats at one school building because they're sort of divided between these different classes. Uh, and then uh, how they work, they connect to a Chromebook or an iPad through Bluetooth. And we've actually done a lot of work to work with schools on exactly um, the type of devices that they typically have and also making sure that even if Wi-Fi cuts out, we actually still save the games. We've done like all this towards sort of making sure it works in a school setting. That's always been the number one. Um, so it works through that. And then as soon as you connect it to Bluetooth, it's a super easy to use app, all block coding based on Scratch. Mm-hmm. And we actually work with one of the Scratch founders on the team. Um, and then the app was built, yeah, by by Dr. Amon Milner and, and direction there. And then also our um, creative 
uh, chief creative officer, Paul Zdanowicz, came from Nickelodeon and Disney. So it's super fun and silly. And like a lot of the things that you see throughout the app are sort of reflective of that. Um, yeah. And so then once you're in there, you can grab preloaded games. You can start playing right away, which is super great way to start. Um, but it's cool because you can see the code. So if you bring up Whack-A-Mole, you're like playing, but you're also actually seeing like like the which loops and which kind of pieces of that were made by the code and you're able to go in there and make changes to it, modify it. And then we have a bunch of like a, a whole library of lesson plans and lesson packs that allow you to sort of get started 45 minutes or so, maybe even some of them shorter and uh, kind of start bringing that into your classes. And then we just partner throughout the year with, with our educators, our unruly educators as we call them. Um, and so we're always doing things like we'll have have an unruly educator come to us like, I have this great idea. I want to bring this into, you know, our Splats Olympics. We want to do Splats Olympics at our school, which is something that our summer girls school did. Um, they brought it after school with parents and kind of had this whole rotation of, of what they were doing with coding and playing. So, um, so we partner with stuff like that and kind of keep the momentum throughout the year, find different teachers at the school to incorporate it in different ways. Um, and just sharing the usage data, things like that. We just think we really kind of care about making sure that the teachers are comfortable, especially if it's their first time, facilitating a computer science lesson. And even if they don't know, and to be honest, like, you know, I don't even know all, all of these coding rules myself. I never was a developer myself, but you can within like a couple of weeks and some, some early training that we do and just kind of that cohort model of having other teachers at your school who are also in this, you can get to a point where you're really comfortable facilitating a classroom very quickly um, and letting the kids, the students really, they, they lead the learning really with splats. So um, they take it, they have amazing ideas for games and they start kind of creating their own and, and that's where it gets really, really fun. I love um, the training piece because I think that's always the missing link with these types of curriculums mm -hmm, and like tools. Absolutely. Um, like some, they have trainings available, but it's like on your own, like if you do it, you do it. If not. So I like that you have that piece. Cause that definitely can help you. Like you said, teachers feel confident and actually use it. Cause I think a lot of times yeah. you get something cool and you get something sent to you and you're like, okay, great. And then you like, don't use it. You totally forget it. So I think having that training is so important and just that professional development, that's fun and engaging still. So that's, I really like how you guys do that in your business model. That's awesome. One of the questions. Yeah, it's something. Oh yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask, sorry, I, before I forget this question, because I'm really wondering, I know because like a lot of teachers are like at different places right now, like I'm in person. Naomi's in person, but we've been like remote with everything going on and who knows what the world we live in. Can kids do like projects like this at home on their devices, like from the app? They can. Yes. Yeah. So we, That's incredible. You know, we actually accelerated that as a feature in the app due to COVID-19. So early on, we um, put virtual splats on the roadmap and we were able to launch that really quickly and kind of really saw the resilience of what we had built and, and how, you know, the app already, you could test out your code on the app directly. So, yeah, so if you have a classroom and you're you know, broken into small teams, like you might have one team, they have all 12 splats up at the front and then the rest are testing out their code so that they can borrow, you know, so you can kind of um, test it out already, but that works great for these hybrid settings as well as virtual because you can, and we are now cloud compatible as well. So you can access from different devices, your same games. So students can code at home and then play at school. Um, and there's a lot of amazing use cases there. And actually COVID has brought out a lot of different use cases for SPLATS that we were, um, you know, that's been one of the best parts is seeing what teachers do with the product and with the experience, because it's, it often surprises our team as well. And uh, one teacher, we had um, Kathy Truesdale in a school in Florida. She is a music teacher and she actually, we have full, so the splats, they make sound out of the splats. They also light up. And so you can kind of incorporate art and music and um, they sense when they're stomped on. And so what she did is she made this giant piano out of the splats and she had each kid had their own splat. They were playing a different note. They were playing music because at the time of COVID they can't use their recorders. They can't sing. They actually had like really rules around not singing. 
Um, and so she was able to get them to be creative and like pull in this music element with code. And we actually put a whole music pack out based on that. Because a lot of times we get lesson plan and pack ideas from our teachers. We work with them directly on that. Mm -hmm. um, so we just did uh, something similar. We did a pack for Morse code, which came from a teacher idea, cool. a social emotional learning pack, because teachers were really like looking for that and some icebreakers for Zoom, for virtual learning that we did through the app. So lots of things like that kind of come from the community that we've built. I think that's cool, the community aspect too, because like... <clears throat> when I'm using like different kinds of curriculum and we write curriculum ourselves, my biggest, like, I guess, beef with different curriculum is like, it's not necessarily always done by a committee or people that have used the product. Like you're saying, when you get to say, Oh, we use it from the teachers that used it and created that lesson. Cause that's, that's where you get the best curriculum. And even like on, on this show, we talk about it all the time. It's like, that's where the best ideas come from are the people that are, you know, on the front lines doing the work and they're seeing like, Oh, this is perfect for this. So I think that right there attests to a lot of the cool things and cool stories you've told today. And it like makes people excited to try something new. Oh yeah. I love it. We just had, um, actually during COVID, we launched our first our teacher advisory board. So we meet regularly with this core group of our educators and get feedback and just like hear from them. So they helped us very much design our stop madness challenge and kind of learn what they're going through. And we talk to teachers all the time, especially through COVID. We had, you know, interviews with about 200 teachers early on to learn what they were going through, what they needed. And that led to things like our app changes and the SCL lesson pack and things like that. Cause I think not enough companies do that. And it's been so important to me from the beginning because of really because of my husband being in education and how technology was being implemented at their school and how how it was done it could be done a lot better if teachers were exactly <clears throat> excuse me um so you've given us so much to think about and you've given us so many <laughs> awesome things that I, i'm just blown away at how much i've written this might be the episode that i've written the most on sticky notes so i think you win an award for that i don't know what you win but you you win <laughs> something <laughs> sticky notes. yes i love it <laughs> oh, no. um so we always like to kind of end the episode so, you know, asking you to kind of tell our listeners um, or people watching where they can find you guys and connect with you guys. Absolutely. So check us out at www.unrulysplats.com or we're on Twitter at unruly underscore studios. And on Twitter, you can definitely see a lot of the really amazing things that teachers around the country are doing with unruly splats and how they're incorporating STEM in a cross-curricular way. And your guys' Instagram too. I love your guys' Instagram. I, I was checking that out after we met and talked and I, I was really impressed with it. I know you guys will love those videos because you guys, I mean, we talk with our listeners all the time about that's like the number one thing is like seeing all those awesome things in motion. So we appreciate you being on today. I know I learned a lot, like I said, and I know Naomi did too. So it's just awesome to have that connection and see all that awesome stuff. So thank you for being here um and doing this for us today thanks for having me this was oh fun. Yeah, yeah it was thank so you. thank you guys for listening today um we want to end the episode by just saying you know we loved creating this episode for you guys and creating awesome content we actually just got done doing a pd session with a school so if you are wanting to do a pd session with us and get the innovative teacher group at your school please reach out to us our calendar is booking up very quick and we would love to chat to your school also, if you haven't already joined our Patreon, make sure you do so. And you want to be part of our innovative teacher corner, don't be afraid to reach out to us. We love to promote you, your business, or whatever makes you an awesome innovative teacher. Make sure you subscribe on all your favorite platforms and make sure you follow us on all social media, Innovative Teacher Podcasts, and make sure you follow along for our awesome journey. Thank you for listening today, innovative teachers. We can't wait to see you in the next episode.